नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय गोविंद हरि गोपाल हरि जय गोपी गोपी बाला गोविंद हरि गोपाल हरि जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय पुत्र का नाम करने वाली उसके का पत्नी और पुत्र का पति का होने करने वाले भगवान शंकर की प्राप्ति करने वाले जिस लगे ही जिसमें का कभी हो मृखंड का उदास का होने लगे करने वाले माँ कंडे के अपने जिसमें का देखकर पूजने करने वाले पिताजी का पिता उदास का दरित देने वाले हैं बड़े बारी उन्हों मृकंडु का मधुवती का देकर भक्ति भगवान शंकर के जन 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 से पल किया होता तथा करने वाले या सुन मृकंडु का पिताजी दुखने क्यों होने हैं ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया सुदेवाया 
Brikandu and Madhuvati, they inquired from Lord Shiva, you are saying a short time. How much is a short time? You and I, we have heard that we only will exist for a short time. How much is a short time? When we are young, we behave very foolish. When we are children, we can't wait until we are adults. And when you are an adult, you regret you wasn't still a child, isn't it? When you grow up and you're an adult and you advance in age, you say, I wish I still had some youth in me. I wish I still had some time left. Brikandu and Madhuvati, Lord Shiva said to them, I'll bless you with his son and he'll only live for 16 years. 16 years is the lifespan of your son. And after those 16 years, he will die and he will come back to the heavens. How long is long? How short is short? How much is enough? When we hear of somebody 80 years old died, we say, oh, well, she lived her life. He lived his life and so God said, come home and so, that's okay. 80 years is a good age. Do you know when we reach 80, we're not ready to live? When we reach 80, it's because you have already worked and you have already sacrificed, you have already built, you have already saved, you have already prepared yourself for smooth sailing. You don't have a worry in the world. You put aside money and you say, this is my funeral money. You put aside money and you say, this is my sick money. You put aside money and you say, who take care of me? I'm giving them that. Isn't it? And then before you know it, Jai Bia Kela. Mar gaya. You're dead and you didn't even know you're dead. And you put aside and put aside and put aside and you deprive yourself from eating the doubles. You deprive yourself from drinking the solo. You deprive yourself from everything. And then you're dead. And you never enjoyed anything. Brikandu and Madhuvati, having this difficult choice, Brikandu and Madhuvati chose. And they chose that they will take the good child. They will take the past child who will live for only 16 years. Brikandu and Madhuvati, making this choice, what will happen? This child could be described to be a devata, a god. That's how he could be described. Can you describe your children like being devatas and devis? Baba, devil and devilies, isn't it? Could you describe your children to be devatas and devis? Last night she was saying to me, that her son is a blessing. Because you know why? While everybody left and went about their merry way and that child was dragging in the garbage and forced the garbage truck to wait and said to the garbage truck, I'll give you a parasad and I'll bring something to drink and I'll see what we have to eat and I'll bring it. Hold on, you hold on. While everybody went to their rooms and their beds and and to their homes, he was the only one who stayed with his father. I had to come and say to them, go and sleep. Lord Ganesh need to rest. Go. Go and sleep. Leave whatever you're doing and go. And I almost fell asleep last night. He didn't knock. He came into the room and it's pitch dark. And I jumped up. I thought it was you. And he said, I just came to say I love you and good night. Sit around. Sweet dreams. I say, hmm, it would have been dead dreams because you frightened me. Good thing it wasn't Pitri, I'm thinking I would have thought it was a boot coming in the room. Tonight, they chose the child that will live for 16 years. And choosing this child that will live for 16 years, this child was described to be like a devata, like a god, like Bhagwan himself. Quickly he was versed in the Vedas and quickly he was versed in the Sastras and quickly he learned all the mantras and quickly he advanced. But quickly he was about to reach to the age of 16. Can you remember just yesterday they were drinking the bottle and you were mixing the bottle for them? And can you remember? Just yesterday you were changing the pampas for your children. Can you remember that? Just yesterday, you were mashing up the aloo and putting some butter in it. Mixing some rice in the butter for your children. Can you remember that? Whether what the occasion is, Kiran says to his grandmother, I want chana and aloo. 
She say, oh God, I make okro. Daina chana. And you try your best to make the children comfortable and happy. Remind them, I am doing for you. And they will come. You might have to do for me. Remind them. Let them know. Tell them. Don't take it for granted that they already know. You tell them so that they will be reminded. They will know. Nikandu, having this son, what will happen? They named their son Markande. Markande noticed that he was going to celebrate his birthday. But everybody was sad and unhappy and teary and crying. And, and the emotions was not celebratory. It was slumber and sad. Can you imagine you're going to stick your birthday cake and everybody looking at you and crying? Not just crying, suske in and crying. You ever hear this suske cry? Hmm? It have a little snot in it. Hmm? Suske crying. I am going to celebrate my birthday and why is everybody unhappy? And so, Mark and Dane, he sits in a company of his mother and his father and he says, tell me, why are you unhappy? And they begin to narrate, well, you're about to celebrate your 16th birthday. But I made a vow to Lord Shiva that you will come for 16 years and so you're about to die and that's why we are unhappy. How long will we live for again? How much more time do we have? I joke all the time and I say we'll live until we're dead but do you know how much people are alive and more dead than they're dead? Because instead of using their life and their existence to do the good things and to lift those around, everything is confusion. Do you know what's confusion? Everything is somebody else's business and everything is something and something and always create something out of nothing. You know anybody like that? Don't answer. Let me get in trouble alone. Because I want to tell you that the people who, who try to make trouble in everybody else's life they do that because they don't have a life of their own. They do that because they, they're not happy. They do that because everything about their life is a show. But the producer of the show only gets the name of being the producer, you know. All you see in the show is all the actors and the glamour. The producer, all you see is his name up on his screen. He produced. You don't even know what he looked like. Hmm? Tonight, Mark and Nain looks at his mother and his father and he says, Why cry? Why are you crying? That's okay if I'm going to die. We will all die. Tonight I want to tell you we will all die. Do you know that? Hello? Just in case you was opening your fridge and you didn't hear me, we will all die. All of us. Me too. But let us not ponder and dwell on when we will die and how we will die and if we will die. Let us enjoy every moment as though it is our last. Let us enjoy every moment. I showed them a video of a little boy, Tavir. Tavir will message me every day and say, what color are we wearing in the Yagya? Tavir will put on the color, sit down on his couch, and look at the prayers on the TV. He wants to know the color so he could dress up. And he could look just like us. And he could sit down and be a part of the Yagya, be a part of the Puja. Not because you're looking on the television mean don't put on no lipstick and powder. I am seeing you. I am seeing, actually you see me more than I see you. But I know that you're there. I know that you're there. I acknowledge that you're there. Always remember that whether somebody is looking or not, physically, there is a being always looking on. Look your best. Your best is not what powder make you look like, you know. Your best is what your karma make you look like. When the opportunity come, do good. Be good. Feed the rabbit. I am feeding the rabbit too much because you know, rabbit didn't say I want to be in a cage. Feed the rabbit. Let it eat. And by feeding the animal, you're repaying a debt. You're repaying your karma. You don't even know that. You don't not for once you have given thought that in your last life you owe that animal a debt and you're repaying that debt so in your next life you know what 
just in case you were back to the animal and God said, you be the animal now. And then the animal be your master. You treated the animal with so much of love. But you know what will happen? You have no regret because you will be treated now with love. Because what goes around, the seed that we plant will bring forth a fruit. Plant a good seed that will bring a good fruit. So there will be no regret. There will be no I could have and I would have and I should have. There will be I did to the best of my ability. Tonight, Mark and they hear that he will die. Mark and they says, don't be worried. Don't be worried and troubled that, about that at all. Mark and they went to the banks of the ocean or the seashore. And Mark and they molded out of the sand a lingam of Lord Shiva. We'll do this. We should do this. And Mark and they molded a lingam out of the sand of the seashore. And making this lingam, Mark and they sat there and in his mind, Mark and they was pouring oblations. There was a physical lingam in front of him, but every offering that came from him was mental. Have you ever heard it is all in your mind? Have you ever heard that before? The power of the subconscious mind. An author wrote an entire epic on the power of the subconscious mind. When you listen, when you read and you take the time, the power to win is in your mind. The power to fail is in your mind. The power to climb and to move and to be healthy and to be successful and to be happy is all in your mind. And otherwise as well. You have to be strong. Strong first in your mind, the way you think. From his mind, he began pouring the oblations. And all he's chanting. Chanting? All he's chanting. Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Chant with me. Om Namah Shiva. That's all he's chanting. With all his love. Chant with me tonight. Om Namah Shiva. Something happens. This Welcome to the Chatak Kitchen, where it's tastier and spicier. For even more taste, cook with Chatak's Amchar Masala, Saffron, Ground Jeera, and Black Pepper. Mix in Chatak's mild, spicy Omadras curry. Get a burst of excitement with a mango Amchar, Pomsade, and mango Kuchula, lime and pepper chunks, West Indian hot sauce, and lime pepper sauce. Plus, Chatak's tamarind and mango chutneys are perfect with Kalori and Sahina. So make your kitchen a Chata kitchen. Chatak's fruit products, bringing good taste to life. Have you been vaccinated? Are you or a loved one experiencing side effects? Have a loved one suddenly died and you suspect it's from being vaccinated? Report this on Covars.com. Trinbigo's own reporting system online to report any mild to severe side effects and even deaths from getting the COVID vaccine. Make your report, whether current or retroactive one today on Covars.com. The Little Store offers you a great shopping experience and cool comfort with knowledgeable, helpful staff. Our large aisles and well-organized shelves are filled with quality puja materials, incense sticks, tasty matai and homemade yogurt. Come to us for all your Indian groceries and spices, SAS paper sahari leaves, household items, sewing supplies, religious books and lots more. You can depend on The Little Store, your store. It's an honor to serve you. Black, scary, shadow-like creature appears, holding in his hand a noose, holding in his hand a dandi, a stick. His eyes are bloodshot red, his teeth are jaggedy and rough looking. And this bean appears in front of Markande. And as this bean appears in front of Markande, Markande takes a little peep, and when he sees him, he closes his eyes tight. tight. 
Markande seeing this bean in front of him, Markande is wondering, what is this? Who is this? It is the very same description that the Shiva Puran is giving. It is the very same description that the Garud Mahapuran is telling. That this is exactly how Yama, the God of Death, looks. Black and horrific. That's how he looks. Long hairs and scary looking. Markande shuts his eyes and closing his eyes, what will happen? Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. He's chanting. Om Namah Shiva. And after chanting, he takes the next peep. And as he peeps again, he sees Lord Shiva himself. He sees this dark being and he's seeing Lord Shiva. And so this dark being and Lord Shiva, they're both having a conversation with each other. And Markande, who is chanting, though he's chanting, he wants to hear what they're saying to each other. You ever talking and having a conversation, but you're trying to listen to somebody else's conversation? Can you multitask? Can you do that? And so Markande, he's hearing where Yama, the God of that is saying, I came for the souls. And Lord Shiva is saying, well, I came for the soul. And Yama is saying, well, the soul belongs to me. And Lord Shiva is saying, well, the soul belongs to me. And Yama is not letting down easily. And Lord Shiva is becoming furious. He's becoming angry. Tonight, the Guru Pran says, Blessed are those who can think of Bhagwan at a time when that comes. For Bhagwan himself will come and take your Atma, your soul. Bhagwan, in the Guru Pran it says, Blessed are those who can chant the name of Bhagwan at the time of death, for that soul gets salvation. If you can't chant, then listen. And if you can't listen, then what? Many other things can be done. What does it say? The Guru Pran says, Actually, the Katha says, Lord Shiva looked at Yama, the God of Death. And he says, you might be the God who destroys life from the human body. But I am the God who gave you life. And I could take it anytime. So tread carefully when it comes to me. Lord Shiva is warning Yama, the God of Death. Tread carefully when it comes to me. Because if you make me angry, then you will suffer the wrath of my anger. And so immediately Yama leaves. Lord Shiva lifts his hand and he blesses Marikandu. May you live. May you continue to live. May you make your mother and your father happy and proud. And Lord Shiva disappears. Markande, he has secured life. He has secured a great blessing from Lord Shiva. We have secured life because we are alive. And that is a blessing. Always remember that. One of the nights in our in our Thursday, Hawad, we learned that falling asleep is natural. Falling asleep is something natural. But waking up from your sleep is only by the grace of Bhagwan. Have you ever given thought to that? Falling asleep is something very natural. We will all fall asleep. Actually, some people are wide open and they're snoring, you know. They're asleep. Many things happening in front of them and around them and they don't know. At the time when death will come, Yama, the God of death himself comes. What determines if he will get his soul? The kind of life that you would have lived. Manne tum govinda govinda bolo Manne tum govinda govinda bolo Govinda 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 bolo Govinda 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 bolo Manne tum govinda govinda bolo Manne tum govinda govinda bolo Man Man is your mind. Manatum. Oh, mind of mine, listen. I'm talking to you. Govinda, 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 Bolo. 
Shanti Nima Govinda. The rainfall, Govinda. The sunshine, Govinda. I'm hungry, Govinda. I get food, Govinda. And everything is through the grace of Govinda, Bhagwan. Train your mind in such a way that even when death comes, Govinda, the mind will automatically begin to chant the name of Bhagwan. And not only Govinda, any form that is close to you, any form that you have a connection with, train your mind in your every moment. Sing the name, sing the praises, train yourself. It says, tonight, What is the pain of death? The other friend says the pain of death is like, can you remember? The pain of death is like a thousand scorpions they're stinging you at one time. Can you imagine? Baba, she died real peaceful, you know. She just closed eyes and that was it. That was the end. Is there anything like a peaceful death? The God of friend says, the very same pain is the pain that you experience when you are born. Because while everybody is celebrating the arrival of the child, what is the child doing? Because you are celebrating the arrival of the child and the child says, oh God, my trouble now start. My pain and my misery and my distress now started. And everybody is celebrating Barahi and Chatti and hmm? celebrating the child crying and crying crying and crying because there is nothing to celebrate my trouble has now begun so too similarly it says that when the soul exits the body everybody around is crying and the soul is celebrating I am free I am free I am free at last I am free but because of the, the attachment that we have to the body because of the attachment that we share death becomes painful Separation becomes painful. The pain of death is as though a thousand scorpions they are stinging you at one time. The Yamduts and the servants of Yamraj, they have the nose and the dhandi. Do you know why? Whether how old, whether how sick, whether what your situation or your circumstances is, whether how much you plan to die, when death comes, you are never ready to die. You don't want to die. The soul doesn't want to exit the body. And so the soul unable to exit the body, yam dudes put the noose around the soul and drag it out of the body. That's why 99.9% .9 of the time when somebody is about to die, they begin to point. They begin to point and they're trying to tell you. But you know what happened? You can't understand what they're saying. They begin to look and they're looking up in the corner and they're looking in one particular way all the time. Or they keep their eyes closed because what they're seeing is so horrific, so scary, so frightening that they don't want to see it. Just like Brekandu tried to hide. He closed his eyes and he took a peep. Baba, she take a peep and she watched me. But the eyes are closed because you know why? Because of this horrific thing that they see. It tells us, Yama and the Yamduts, they take the soul. The weapons that they have, they're weapons that will create pain. And that's how the, the that is referred to as being something very painful. The Guru Pran talks about what happens to the, the body after the soul is dragged. If there, there are things that can identify if the soul would have been a good soul and a soul that will gain mukti, salvation. The Guru Pran says that when somebody dies and the eyes are open or the mouth is open, it is not because they wanted to see you. It is not because they wanted to tell you something. But it is because that is where the soul exited from. The Guru Pran says, if there is excretion at the time of death, then that is where the soul would have left from. The Guru Pran says, that if the soul leaves from the upper part of the body, the soul leaves, there are several places through which the soul can leave. The mund, the head, the top of the head. The Guru Pran says that if the soul leaves from any part of the body upward, then Chances are the soul will get liberation, mukti. 
But if a soul needs from the lower region, then worship has to be done praying for forgiveness and the atonement of the soul. When somebody is about to die and you have identified that that person is going to die, what are some of the things that you can do to ease the suffering of that person? Have any idea? What are some of the things that we can do to ease the pain? The Gurdjieff says, ideally, that dying person should be placed on the lipid floor. That wasn't a problem in time gone by because everybody had the lipid floor. So instantly, you'll get mukti just by lying on the lipid floor. But in 2021, we have Cleopatra and porcelain. Hmm? You put them to lie on the lipid floor with your foot facing south and the head in a northern direction. That cannot be done. Then you please on the bed, under the sheets of the person who is going to die, push grass. That cannot be done. You give them the tulsi dal. The tulsi and water. That cannot be done. You chant the mantras. You pray. You read the verses of the Bhagavad Gita. That cannot be done. You smear the body with chandan. You place chandan about the body. That cannot be done. You place a holy mark. You put the mala. Anything that is symbolic of being holy and godlike on the body. That cannot be done. There is no mala. The Garu Pran says, you put on a piece of gold for the person who is about to die. And so this eases the exit. It eases the pain. That's why when you're dead already, they put the gold. But the gold is supposed to already be placed while you're living. Long ago, the old people, their prized possession was their jewelry, you know. You know that? And anytime there will be a function, you know what they will do? You know what they'll do? You ain't dead yet. Mommy, they have a chain with some little um, coin. About 15 coin hanging down. Who get that chain? I want it. Hmm? The mohar turn into a sohar. The bera turn into a beraha. Because it's only bera, 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 mohar, 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 mohar. Like a song. Sohar and beraha. Hmm? You like bera, buy your own one. You like mohar, buy your own one. Sing your own sohar while you're wearing your own mohar. Hmm? So nobody could reproach you. The Gadot friend says that there is no gold. Then you can play a bhajan. You can play anything sentimental. Giving this elaborate explanation as to what can be done. Then if somebody is about to die, are there any gifts that can be given to help eliminate the pain or the suffering of death? Can you give? What can we give? Anybody knows? What can we give? We give the Gita in Dhan. There is no Gita. We give the Dakshina to the holy beings. There is no Dakshina. We give the Tulsi plant. There is no Tulsi plant. Then what can we give? We give food in honor of the person who is sick and dying. We make gifts and we give gifts in the name of the person who is sick and dying to eliminate the suffering, the pain of death. Giving all of these things, it eases the pain of death. The Gunnar Pran says that when the soul exits the body, the soul is described as being Angushta. Angushta Matra is the name or the term used from the Gunnar Pran. Angushta Matra, meaning that the soul 
How big is your soul? How big is your soul? See the flame of the deer? That's how big your soul is. See your thumb? Angushta means your thumb. Look at your thumb. And that's the size of your soul. Angushta matra. The size of your thumb. That's the size of your soul. When the soul exits the body, the soul becomes very confused because the body that the soul was so attached to no longer belongs to it. So it says the soul begins the bharmi. Have you ever heard that word before? Bharmi. Bharmi. Bharmi means it begins to wander all around. And the only thing that will bring comfort to the soul is the lighting lamp that you light. You face the flame of the lamp in a sudden direction because this is where the soul will make its journey in a sudden direction. So indirectly, you're making familiar to the soul that this is the direction in which you'll have to go, the sudden direction. The deer is kept lighting for the duration until the rituals are performed. When the body is brought home for the cremation or the burial, that deer is placed under the head of the person who has died to bring comfort to that soul. The girlfriend says, blessed is the person who dies on the leaping floor. That's why when the body is going to be brought home, they leap in the spot that you're going to put the, the body. The girlfriend says that blessed is the soul that dies on the kush grass, they put some kush grass too. Although you're dead already, they're still trying to pray for the repose of your soul. There was a tradition long ago that they didn't leap in the ground. You, know? you never saw that. They leap it inside of the box before they place the body. So nobody saw that gobar on the ground in time gone by because the gobar was placed inside of the, the coffin, the box. The kush grass was placed under the body. And so this is how the body was prepared. In time gone by, the old people believed that on the body of a person who had died, you don't put on clothes that is sewn or stitched. And if it was sewn or if it was stitched, they will cut the back open so that it will remain open and free. And this is how they dress the body. Because you came into the world free and so you are exiting the world free. Make sure you put on clothes that have the back for me. Yeah? Just in case I have to walk somewhere. You know, I'll be fully clothed. Please, make sure. Once you all are around. The other friend says that this lighting lamp, this dia, brings comfort to the soul. Who can perform the rituals of the Anteshti? Narayan, Narayan. Have you been vaccinated? Are you or a loved one experiencing side effects? Have a loved one suddenly died and you suspect it's from being vaccinated? Report this on Kovaz.com, Trinbigo's own reporting system online to report any mild to severe side effects and even deaths from getting the COVID vaccine. Make your report, whether current or retroactive one today on Kovaz.com. The Little Store offers you a great shopping experience and cool comfort with knowledgeable, helpful staff. Our large aisles and well-organized shelves are filled with quality puja materials, incense sticks, tasty matai and homemade yogurt. Come to us for all your Indian groceries and spices, SAS paper sahari leaves, household items, sewing supplies, religious books and lots more. You can depend on The Little Store, your store. It's an honor to serve you. Welcome to the Chatak Kitchen, where it's tastier and spicier. For even more taste, cook with Chatak's Amchar Masala, Saffron, Ground Jeera and Black Pepper. Mix in Chatak's mild, spicy Omadras Curry. Get a burst of excitement with a Mango Amchar, Homsa Day and Mango Kuchila, Lime and Pepper Chunks, West Indian Hot Sauce and Lime Pepper Sauce. Plus, Chatak's Tamarind and Mango Chutneys are perfect with Kalori and Sahina. So make your kitchen a Chatak Kitchen. Chatak's Fruit Product that's bringing good taste to life. Who can perform the rituals of the Antishti and the after death ceremonies?
Can you perform the rituals for yourself? Yes, you can. Can you do your pinda dan while you're alive? Yes, you can. Can you do the giving of the gifts to prepare your soul? Yes, you can. That's why you do the gaudan, etc. while you're alive with your own hand. You have given these gifts that will help you in that. Hell is referred to as put. Put. Your son is referred to as putra. Your putra takes you out of put. Your son takes you out of hell, suffering. Who performs the ritual? I'm telling you what the book says. This is not my opinion. The book says in the very introduction of this, and I'm saying this with conviction, because of place, date, time, situation, and circumstances. Five things. Place, date, Time, situation, and circumstances. You use whatever is available. The son, the eldest son, should perform the ritual. The eldest son cannot because of health or otherwise. The smallest son. The smallest son cannot perform the ritual. Then any son in between that is available performs the ritual. There is no son, a brother. There is no brother, a nephew. There is no nephew, a friend. There is no friend, a neighbor. There is no neighbor. You ought to have a relationship with your pandit. He is supposed to have that relationship with you. That if there is nobody to perform the ritual, he performs the ritual in your honor. And then, if he cannot perform the ritual, any other member of the family, woman or otherwise, they're given the opportunity to perform the ritual. Daughters who are married, they have joined the lineage or the kutra of their husbands. And that is what complicates them or implicates them from making the offerings in the name of their parents. Because you would have joined the gutra of your husband, your mother-in-law now becomes your mother. Your father-in-law now becomes like your father. And that's why you're prohibited from bowing to the feet of mother and father. Nobody says don't do the arti. Nobody says don't hug them and kiss them and love them and show affection. Because it does not change the fact that it is your mother and your you didn't fall from the sky. But your mother and father gave you in dan as a gift to your husband. And so it is believed that by you bowing to their feet is as though there is some kind of reproach happening. And in Hinduism, we never reproach Whatever we give, we give freely from the depths of our. The chosen person to perform this ceremony has to shave his head. Why does he have to shave his head? Now listen to this. Science has proven, science has said to us, most of what we eat is stored in our cave. The funeral has to happen in a very quick time. And there is no prolonged period of time for fasting to happen, to cleanse your body. So the quickest and most efficient way of purifying your body is by shaving the hair. The choti or the chulki is left. 
There is great science and philosophy in the reason why. Long ago, they didn't have cell phone, Samsung, and Apple that is go blank and come on. They didn't have that. So the truth, the, the truth he appeared to be a message to anybody who saw you. There was a death. Somebody died. They will inquire who died. Actually, when you see that, you identify that somebody died, isn't it? But the reason why it is left in this part of the head is because this is the mund. This is the softest part of the head. When a baby is born, that part of the head is like jelly, isn't it? And you have to rub and mold. And that's why the old people say, though walk in the Jew, you will get sick. Have you ever heard that before? Because surely if you go bareheaded, when your head and your body is accustomed to the hair, as you go out into the elements, you will become sick. And that's why the hair is left. Not only that. The Guru friend says that when the rituals of the Antishti and the Pindadan and all of these things, they're happening. The Choti or the Chuki should be knotted. To perform the ritual and not just knotted knotted with a piece of kush grass tied to it it is not a style it is your antenna your antenna to tap into the power of Bhagwan Krishna Bhagwan Vishnu to bless the souls of the person who has died The son who is performing the rituals. Now in an effort to purify himself even further. He abstains from salt. Abstaining from salt and high chunkyate food. He is now getting his senses under control. And in a quick time. Half of the time that science says that your body will purify itself from the things that you have injected into it. By not having salt. Quickly, the body purges and purifies itself. And that's the reason why there is no salt in the diet. And it is very logical. It is proven by science and very logical. These things are not traditional. Things are scriptural. There is a difference with mouse. He said, do it. And the scripture says, that's why Bhagwan Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, whenever there is a doubt and the mind becomes clouded, let your scripture be your guide. Let your scripture be your guide. Not the opinion of anybody, but the scripture itself. The son who is performing the ritual prepares to perform this ritual with conviction. The Guru friend says, he is supposed to free himself from grief. For those tears affects the travel of the soul. That's why some pundits say, don't cry. Well, I want to tell you, you cry all you want. Get it out of your system. Free yourself. Liberate yourself. Because you know why? By keeping that grief inside of you, it might only land you up being sick yourself. Free yourself. Cry if you have to. As much as if you have to. That's my opinion. Eh? That's not scripture. Scripture says don't cry. My opinion is let it out. The Guru Pran goes on to say that when the body is prepared for the committal or the cremation or the burial or the funeral. Funeral is really a fancy word. Anteshni is a fancy word to describe the disposal of the body. That's what it is. The funeral is really the disposal of the body. Getting rid of the body. That's what you're doing on the day of the funeral, isn't it? The disposing of the body. The body of a person who has died 
should never be taken inside of a home. Baba, if you know what happened, the toilet flushing by itself, you had to the prayers good, and the light come on, and Baba, I hear him moi, stick knocking, boop, boop, boop on the ground. Baba, like you ain't do this prayers good, you know, check and see if she did in a good time or a bad time. Well, I want to tell you, you got dead before your time. Because you have created your frustration by yourself. You have done that to yourself. Because the Guru Pran says that that soul constantly tries to get back into that body. But there are many wandering souls that also try to inhabit that body. And so they follow that body everywhere the body goes. That's why you do not bring the body, the corpse, inside of the home. It is left outside, under a tent, a touched tent, on a leaf bed floor. There are a certain amount of stops that has to be made from that point onwards. Well, I went and passed she through the back road because it had a house there. And we will carry she through the front road because, you know, she used to live there when she was small. And we will carry she up the road because she mother used to live there. And we will pass she through up the road and we will go down the hill by the cow pen. She used to drink milk from the cow. Your soul done confused already. And we're creating more confusion. And she did say, well, when she dead, she want to come inside the house. So we break down the door to bring the body inside. And all different kinds of foolish things you do. When you are dead, you are not the authority. Because you are, oh God. You know how much people will get vexed because I said that. But it is the truth. At that time, it is not what your opinion is about. At that time, it is what is in the best interest of the soul, not the body. It is what should be done in the best interest of the soul to make sure that this transition is a peaceful one for the soul. The Guru Pran says that a pinda is offered in the hand of the person who has died at the home. Symbolic of saying that through this hand many vows and promises might have been made. Symbolic of saying that through this hand the years would have been lit and the dhar would have been offered and puja would have been done. But now from this hand, this is the final offering that will come. This second pinda is offered by the gate, the dwar. It is called the dwar pinda. Dwar means door, the gate. And so that pinda is offered for traveling mercies. So that nothing, nothing unto what happens on the way to the cremation or to the burial. And the Guru Pran says that the third pinda is supposed to be offered by a four-road junction. And it gives an elaborate explanation as to where the pinda should be offered. What will you think about people if you see them stop on a junction and pull out a body and rest it down in the middle of the four-road and offering pinda and doing RT and, and you say, hmm? Ojai. Hmm? Because of place, date, time, situation and circumstances you do accordingly. That's where now the pundits do the stops upon the cremation or the burial ground. That's why now it happens. And majority of the stops, they're made upon the cremation site. Should we eat or drink on the cremation site? You figure it out. And I think we really will never figure it out. But I want to tell you with conviction in my heart. When I died, they might cremate me on the Mosquito Creek. Might. I don't know. Might. I wouldn't be there. But just in case you decide to walk with your trunk filled with any kind of spirit, I will show you spirit. Because you ought to have some kind of respect for that sight. He did already. Let me take a drink for that. Uh huh. It wouldn't only be smoke from the chitta. I will smoke you out. Because you ought to have some kind of respect. I want to tell you. Maybe you don't know this. But the cremation and the burial ground is considered to be sacred and holy. 
Lord Shiva himself dwells on the cremation site. Lord Shiva himself lives there. And if you are pious and good and pure and noble, Lord Shiva will take the ashes from your chitta and rub it on his skin. Every single action that is performed by the members of the family affects the travel of the soul. That's why you don't fight for Bera and fight for land and fight for money and home. How much money she has, and you take all she pension, so you do the prayers, and you this, and you that. The old people, they only like because of what they have, you know. You know that? And the minute they don't have, you know what happened? Don't answer. Let me get in trouble alone. Your only worth, what you have. And the minute you don't have, and you can't give, you're in real trouble. Real trouble. On the cremation site, Lord Shiva himself dwells there. So the next time you're going to a cremation, put only water in your trunk. Put some in your radiator too, so you wouldn't shut down. But nothing else to desecrate the holy ground. And I want to tell you, the Guru Pran says is a Mahapap. You see, when you go to a wedding, especially when it is in a temple, you never carry any kind of spirit in your car or anywhere else. Would you fill your trunk with a, a cooler of bears when you go into a yagya by the temple? Then why will you do it when you're going to a wedding? Then why will you do it when you're going to a cremation? Why? It is disrespect. Total disrespect. And there are many people who will become upset when I said that. It's good for you. Because we never like to hear the truth. And if you are angry with me because I told you the truth, then so be it. You have created a sin. The Guru Pran says now, the body is prepared as a Purnahuti. Every ingredient that is placed on the body acts as purification for the body. Ghee. Ghee acts as a purification. To nullify or to ward away a pap, a sin, a particular sin. The till is offered to ward away a sin. The Guru Brand says the body should be adorned with different things. Tomorrow night I'll tell you what are the things and what are the sins that it nullifies. Long ago, the old people, although the funeral home will carry the ghee and they will still from home carry some fresh cow ghee. You all know? Because the Guru Pran tells, and it is still practiced in India till today, that the head or the skull, it sounds graphic, is supposed to be opened, and inside of there you're supposed to fill it with key, like a balidan, like a final offering into the fire. In India till today, they practice that tradition, where they use a bamboo rod and they puncture the skull. And they pour into the head, ghee. Till today, Google it and you will see for yourself. I have been able to see firsthand. I want to tell you <laughs> that on my last trip to India, I spent an entire day on the cremation site. The entire day, the whole day on the cart. I cry for people I don't even know. I laugh at people I've never seen in my whole life. And I experience what death is like in India. We go to Mosquito Creek and we have six cremation and you say, oh God, real people burn. Well, you never see real people yet. Because I'm talking about 50, 60 at one time everywhere being cremated. And in India, their tradition is not ours. Depending on the family that you come from and the status that you have, that's how much they charge for the wood that they will cremate you. Depending on the weight of the body, there is a particular weight in the amount of wood that they have to use. That's how they charge you. Depending on the lineage and depending on the family that you come from, you're cremated in different spots. They're not all cremated the same place. And that is their tradition. 
we have our own tradition here. Tonight, the Guru Pran says that the body is now dressed and ready for the cremation and all of these ingredients have been placed on the body. And now, as the body has been placed into the chitta, havan is about to take place. The havan is not a havan that you will hear in the puja. The havan is not a havan that you will hear anywhere. But on the cremation side. The havan is not aji and aja swaha. And nani and nana swaha. O swadha. It is not that. The havan is an intricate havan. Lobhyaya, lobitaya. And so the mantras are not mantras that you will hear in the puja. No name of any devata or any devi is chanted. Indirectly, now you're praying. The first thing the yajman does is taking a piece of wood. He begins to inscribe seven lines on the ground. Ayodhya, Mathura, Maya, Kashi, Kanji. I am now sanctifying the spot where the body of my beloved will be cremated to be holy like Maya, Mathura, the holy places where Bhagwan himself walked. And then offering the arpan, offering water around the fire, you invoke Agani Devata. He is not the Agani that is worshipped in the puja. He is now referred to as Kravya Vahai Agani. Kravya Vahai Agani is the fire god that has been given the task to purify the body through fire. Flesh eating fire, he is referred to as in the Karupran. And every offering that is offered into the fire is a different part of the body now you are offering into the fire. The hairs of the body, the skin of the body, the bone of the body, the teeth of the body, the eye, the eyelid, the air, the eardrum, the liquids of the air. I didn't even know the airs had liquid. But scripture says that there is liquid in your air. And any time that liquid loses its balance, your whole body loses its balance. Did you know that? Well, I had no clue. I always thought you had an airdrop. And that was about it. And some wax. So, so elaborate. Scripture has declared all of these things. And then we want to question, is all religion real? Then we want to question, is all religion something that is made up? Or can it be proven? Every single detail of the religion can be proven by science. Everything. The Ramayana spoke about a bridge. The bridge could be found. The Ramayana spoke about Bhagwan Krishna being born in a place, in a, in a prison cell. You can see it. And every single thing that the scripture talks about, it is there, it is evident. And you are able to see. And yet we question is it real? Is it real? Tonight, I want to ask you, are you for real? What is the answer question when there is all of the facts to support? Everything. The Little Store offers you a great shopping experience and cool comfort with knowledgeable, helpful staff. Our large aisles and well-organized shelves are filled with quality puja materials, incense sticks, tasty matai and homemade yogurt. Come to us for all your Indian groceries and spices, SAS paper sahari leaves, household items, sewing supplies, religious books and lots more. You can depend on The Little Store, your store. It's an honor to serve you. Welcome to the Chatak Kitchen, where it's tastier and spicier. For even more taste, cook with Chatak's Amchar Masala, Saffron, Ground Jeera and Black Pepper. Mix in Chatak's mild, spicy Omadras Curry. Get a burst of excitement with a Mango Amchar, Homsa Day and Mango Kuchula, Lime and Pepper Chunks, West Indian Hot Sauce and Lime Pepper Sauce. Plus, Chatak's Tamarind and Mango Chutneys are perfect with Kalori and Sahina. So make your kitchen a Chatak Kitchen. Chatak's Fruit Products, bringing good taste to life.
Have you been vaccinated? Are you or a loved one experiencing side effects? Have a loved one suddenly died and you suspect it's from being vaccinated? Report this on Covars.com, Trinbigo's own reporting system online to report any mild to severe side effects and even deaths from getting the COVID vaccine. Make your report, whether current or retroactive one today on Covars.com. After performing the Havan, the Pucharas are set ablaze and shunting the elements of the body. You walk around the Chitta five times and the first place that is ignited on the body is Oh God, the mouth. For Agni Devata or the Fire God lives in the mouth. He is the mouth through which the devatas eat of the oblations that we pour into the fire. And so igniting the body from the mouth, tarpan is offered at that point. The first offering is offered not in the name of the body, but in the name of the soul. To bring comfort not to the body, but to the soul. The soul becomes very agitated at that point. Because the body is being destroyed. The soul becomes very angry. That's where the philosophy of the boys performing the ritual should be home by 6 o'clock in the evening. Not to protect you from any outside forces but to protect you from that very same soul because you are responsible for destroying the we have listened to Yama we have listened to the experience of death and we have listened to the funeral sermon what we listen to tomorrow tune in and we'll all find out Mahavishnu Bhagavan Ki Jai. We prepare for the Havan. Manne tum govind govind bolo. Manne tum govind govind bolo.
परमेश्वर पाकर मंदिकार जपाकर जपाकर मंदिकार हरे कृष्ण गोविंद मोहन मोरा स्वच्छ है हरे ओ मनलाल मन ओ मनलाल मन ओ मनलाल मन हरे कृष्ण गोविंद मोहन मोरा सृष्टि गलिया वही सृष्टि कारी वही सृष्टि कलिया वही सृष्टि कारी Before we do the aarti this evening, over the past few evenings, our president and our treasurer and members of the group, our vice president, they had made it possible that a murti of Lord Ganesh will be placed out in Palmi's Park. They had made it possible over the past few days that a murti of Lord Ganesh was placed out in Palmi's Park. There were many people who went there. There were many people who made their offerings. There were many people who took their malas and their parsad. And it was a myth long ago that in the time of Pitra Paksh, everybody was frightened and, and scared. And the Garu Pran does say that during the time of Pitra Paksh, the souls of the Pitras that are in bondage, they're freed. And so they come. And so the only thing that brings comfort to them is the remembrance, us paying tribute to them. And if we don't pay tribute to them and we don't remember them and we don't make oblations of love to them, they leave and they go back. When Pitra Paksh comes to them, disappointed. We have printed a, a, a handout of how to do the, in the most simplest, easiest way of how, and to get the maximum blessing out of it. We have printed and, and given to all members of the group who didn't get one but they will the murti of lord ganesh has been submerged this morning but from today this evening out in palmi's park they have made it possible once more they have done it not me they have made it possible where the murti of lord krishna and radha devi is now in palmi's park you're not physically making an offering or cooking food at home or whatever. Take a fruit. Go to Palmi's Park. Meet with Lord Krishna. Pray and ask him to bless the souls of your pitras and offer it at his feet. Don't go there and pour any water on the murti. But you could carry a bottle of water and leave it at his feet. May the pitras never suffer for want of something to drink. Carry a little umbrella. Put it by his feet. May he never suffer for want of shelter. Whatever you want to give in the name of your pitras. Go. Our president and our vice president and our treasurer. They have made this possible for you. Go. Pray to Bhagwan Krishna. Carry a little tulsi plant and leave it at the feet of Lord Krishna. Go and pray. For those of you who are desirous of carrying your Gita, carry your Gita and put it at the feet of Lord Krishna. Whatever it is you want to carry, you carry it. And you offer it to Lord Krishna and pray. Pray for your Pitras. Pray that their souls will always, always be blessed. I'm not sure for how much days the Murti will be there. I'm not sure. By tomorrow we'll tell you. We'll confirm. But the Murti is there. It is already there. Robbie made his way there today, did you? And he dressed the murtis very beautifully. Go, meet with Bhagwan Krishna, pray for your pitras. 
we have all been given an opportunity when we pray we're not only praying for their souls but indirectly we are praying for our own souls so that when that comes knocking at our door we have secured a blessing take your mala carry it offer it nobody is preventing you from performing your worship nobody go on site at all time there is a security guard on site there are rules that you have to follow just like when you go into a mandir you don't walk all over by the murtis with your shoes there are rules that you have to follow but the reality is in the time that we are living in and given the circumstances and the situation we have to be open to following the rules because it is in the interests of everybody so i want to tell you our president she has created this opportunity to receive the darshan the blessings of bhagwan let us make full use of this tonight let us all stand as we join in the aarti om jai jagadish hari भक्त जनों के संत दास जनों के संत चनमी दूर करे जय जगदीश हरे मात पिता तुम मेरे शरण कहो किसके स्वामी शरण कहो किसके तुम बिन और न दूजा बिन और न पूजा आस करो जिसके तुम पूरन परमात्मा तुम अंतर यामी स्वामी तुम अंतर यामी पार ब्रह्मा परमेश्वर पार ब्रह्मा परमेश्वर तुम सबके स्वामी शंकचक्रधनाधर अक्ष पुंदरी काक्ष प्रेत मोक्ष as those souls that are in bondage they are now freed may all singing may all blessings may all mantras may all love now bring comfort to those souls we beg of you o bhagwan aaj jandiri me hi hum ne sa ज्ञान का सूरज चमकारी भगवान सिंह टेबल पर ही आज मेरे मेरे हम ज्ञान का सूरज चमकारी
प्रभु ने हमारे तेरी परमारे प्रभु हे हम सूर्य 
Everybody, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 